Okay, so here we are in a field of rushes and poor grass. Um, this is about the worst spot we could find on the farm to dig a raised bed. The idea is if you can dig one here, you can dig it anywhere. This is an old system of digging that goes back centuries probably and we don't need any timber, anything else, just the bare grass and a good shovel. Good being the optional word. Um, the idea is that in a very short time you can create a fertile bed, as I say, with no real resources. So stage one is to pick your site. Stage two is to line it out with a piece of string. If you're good, you don't need a piece of string, but I'm not good. So we have a piece of string. And the third thing is on the side that you're going to actually put up the raised bed, you want to, um, we want to cut a line down the side of the string. This enables us to turn the sod very easily. Now this will look particularly difficult because this is a rushy field. So we've actually got to cut through heavy rush roots, which goes to show if you can do this here, you can hear them tearing. If you can do it here, you can do it anywhere. Now, on this side, we're trying not to tear the sod so that we roll it over like a hinge. It takes a bit of practice. And you just make sure it sits where it's supposed to be. Don't try and dig sods that are too big. Take small pieces, it's easier. Especially for old fellas like myself. The shovel at this angle is better than a spade. With this you don't have to do much bending. And then when you're in the zone, you can flow quite quickly. Tommy Hoare in Bentry, who taught me this, at the end of the Dingle Peninsula, back in the early 80s, he would have just put up a 50 metre row a bed per day for himself and he was in his 70s so as you can see a lot of leaning on the shovel is important because let's face it that's why the handles are so long So the next thing we're going to do is put up the other side of the bed. This is the outside of one side. So we've got to be careful we don't want to make it... Traditionally, you would only make it about that wide, but I might make it a bit wider. So I might make it about that wide, which means I have to turn the sod from a sod width beyond that. So I'm going to make a little cut there now. Again, the two sides and turn the sod in. So if you can see that now is going to be the width of the bed. So this is going to be the width of the string for the new line. So if I put this over here, I'll measure ah, I'll measure the width of the bed. Yeah, so bring it out to the... That's it. Yeah. Oh. Lovely. Just take it away. So, so you can make this bed as wide or as narrow as you like. Wherever you're growing, you might have to dig the sods a bit more shallow, dig them a bit deeper. It's all a question of getting the knack.
we put the manure in now. This is well rotted donkey manure because we have donkeys. You can use donkey manure, horse manure, seaweed, cow manure, um, compost from your garden, grass cuttings if you've got nothing else. Now, before I push up the next one, we could just fold over the ends. Same technique. Doesn't have to be done this. Sort of keeps the thing tidy. Now you'll see this angle. So these sods are going to come out and go into the middle. Now, if you look at this, you see the grass is on top, but there's a like a a, a sliver of soil without grass because of the angle of the shovel cut. So that's turned over, covering the grass behind. So you, you're literally nudging all these sods up together nice and tight. This is a very similar system that was used all over Ireland with anyone who couldn't afford a horse and plow. What we'll do right now is maybe throw, throw some potatoes in, but basically you can plant everything you want into a bed like this. These beds would have been put up for the whole vegetable crop. So we finished filling the sods onto the bed and if you notice I use sods from all the way around and that means there's no grass going to encroach back into the bed from the sides. It's like a moat. The old fellas used to plant the potatoes closer together on these raised beds than you would out in an open ridged field. Probably because there's all this fertility from all these areas combined. So by chitting potatoes, we're cutting at them so there's an individual sprout on each potato. It's not the end of the world if there's only one sprout and it's not the end of the world if they're not chitted. So, um, and then we place them on the bed. We'll probably go three, hmm, maybe two across and one back a bit and then two across and one back a bit. We don't want them too close. Now, when you plant these potatoes, you don't put them under a heavy sod. I tried that before, they don't grow. So what you do is find the adjacent hole, slot them in with the bud pointing up and just let a bit of soft earth go over the top of them. So just look in, put them in between the sods and put it with the sprout getting where it can grow easily without being inhibited by heavy sods. So I have to dig a bit too. There we are. If you can't get seed potatoes, just go to the organic store and buy some organic potatoes better than nothing. Seed potatoes are grown specifically because they're known to be disease free. So April, May, June, these should be ready by the end of June. You can plant your potatoes, as with most crops in your garden, way out into May. Uh, but if you're getting planting potatoes in May, try and get blight-free varieties because the blight comes in June, July and they will, the other ones will get blight and not give you a crop unless you start spraying and stuff. So now the potatoes are in the ground but they're not really well buried because they're just in behind heavy sods. So now we turn this bed 
into a smooth, wonderful raised bed that looks like a professional did it. Um, why did you cough? <laughs> so, so the idea here is, this is where it's going to get difficult here. You heard the crunching, the ripping of rushes when we were turning the suds. And now we're getting literally into um, mountain rock just underneath us in places. So we, what we want to do now is get, if there's rock stones, we can put them to one side, don't throw them into the grass. We want to get nice layer of finer soil. We're going to like seal the gaps. Seal the gaps on the raised bed with the finer. And I can break it up like that. Now, so as you can see, as I quickly tuck those ones in, there's no weeds. The weeds might come up in the gaps between the suds, but now we're putting the fine soil on and chopping it down. That will suppress the weeds. And what's probably going to happen in this case is the potatoes will come up before the weeds. And then a little bit of earthing up will suppress the weeds and you'll have your crop. So you can see what's happening now, a nice bit of cultivation. There's one other thing I always called the Kerry Slap, which was that. So you can actually, like I'm sealing the top, just seal the sides as well. Too deep, you're literally just no, but the, well, the real pathway. trick is to leave yourself with the pathway. Yeah. If you're not balanced with your shovel depth, you're ending up with a load of trips. Another slap on the side to tide it. You see, the sides are vertical. If it's sandy soil, then it might not be quite vertical, but that's a vertical raised bed with no timber. 